tune in for Patrick Ching's painting in paradise. Aloha, I'm Patrick Ching, and thank you for joining me on Painting in Paradise. In this episode, we learn about mangoes. We'll see how mangoes became so well-loved in Hawaii. I'll show you how to draw a mango, and then how to paint one. All this and more on a deliciously colored episode of Hawaii's monk seals and green sea turtles have been around for millions of years. When their numbers got low, they became protected by law. These animals are returning to beaches they've not come to for hundreds of years. This causes excitement and sometimes conflict. Honwen Hina is a children's book that was painted with aloha by many artists of all ages. This story of coexistence answers some questions about the history of these animals, but more importantly, about their future. Available at the Kilauea Lighthouse, Patrick Ching Art in the Princeville Center, or online at patrickchingart.com. Hawaii is famous for our colorful and delicious tropical fruit, most of which has been introduced to the islands from other parts of the world. Mangoes, which are native to India, were first introduced to Hawaii via Mexico by Spanish horticulturalist Don Francisco de Paula y Marin. Thus began Hawaii's love affair with mangoes. Here we eat mango fresh, pickled, as chutney, and in a wide variety of culinary dishes. There are whole festivals for mangoes and many recipes available for this cherished fruit. Over the years, many varieties of mangoes have been developed, and some have shapes resembling an apostrophe or the number nine. Now we'll hear from arborist Heidi Bornhorst to tell us a little more about mangoes in Hawaii. So mango, one of our all-time favorite fruit trees in Hawaii, came to us from India. Don Francisco de Paula Marin brought us what we today call the common mango, from India via Mexico to Hawaii. Mango is one of our favorite fruit trees in Hawaii. We have many varieties. Many of us grew up with Hayden and Peary, um, but there are new, better varieties and better varieties for wet areas. It's not just the flavor of the fruits that's so desirable, but also the beauty of the fruits and the trees themselves. One of the other beauty parts of a mango, even if it's not your tree, even if you're just driving around, the leaves, the liko, the new leaves, they come out red and purple. And those are protective pigments because the leaves are soft, but they're so beautiful. Liko of mango, new leaves, something to try and do in our art. When mangoes flower, another beautiful sight. They put out all these heads of flowers, the bees and birds will come. And then besides the beauty, the reward will be mango fruit. When we return, I'll show you how to draw a mango. Hey friends, it's me, Patrick Ching, and I'm here to introduce you to the Papa Hanao Mokuakea Song and Color Book Project. All you gotta do is just go to uh, www.papahanaomokuakeasong.com and here I'm going to do it right here see it's on the computer and then when the website comes up it might start playing some music and if not you just press this little button right there and magic that's Kavika Kahiapo and he's telling us about this song you can even download the coloring book pages and the ukulele chords. Hmm. I'm going to start 
scroll down a little bit. Scroll down and get the free coloring book pages. Right there, you can download the coloring book pages, print them out, and color them. See them. Now this downloads better with a laptop computer rather than a um, handheld device. Kabika Kahiapo. So if you want to learn a lot and have fun doing it, download, print, and color the pages at papahanaomokuakeasong.com papahanaomokuakeasong.com Okay gang, so now I'm going to show you how I go about drawing a mango. And a mango might seem very simple, and it is, but it's got a lot to teach us about light and shading and forming up. And I'm just going to be using a pencil this time. Yeah, usually I'm using a pen so you can see better. But this time I'm going to go a little more into some delicate shading. You ready? You ready? You ready? Everybody ready? Okay, let's go. To start this mango off, I'm going to put a larger circle up there and a smaller circle down there. You know they're kind of shaped like an apostrophe? Yeah, I'll show you what I mean in a little bit, okay? So I got my larger circle right there, my smaller circle right there. Now when I go and put the detail line around these two circles, I'm going to go like this. There, and that's my shape of a mango, okay? We've got its stem coming down from way up there. You know, it's got bing. There's my shape of my mango and its stem. Now to offset this mango, in other words, make it stand out from the background, I'm gonna put a bunch of shapes of mango leaves in the background, okay? There. Now, to start off with, I'm gonna give everything a tone, okay? Now watch what I mean. When you do your shading, notice that my hand has a curve, all of ours does. And uh, I'm gonna try and keep it quite straight, but I'm just gonna start shading like this. Yeah. And I'm gonna shade everything around my mango first. Okay, so what I'm doing here is I'm kind of making the background dark with the shape of the leaves and I'm going to leave the mango area light for now because the mango is going to be the star of our show. Okay, now later on I can go get it even darker around the mango, but now we have a pretty uh, light or white looking mango. Let's say the sun's coming from this direction. It's going to light up most of that part of the mango. And this is a good lesson about shading, direct light and reflected light. What is he talking about? Well, I'm gonna show you. Okay, now because the light's gonna be coming from this direction, I'm gonna shade most of this side of the mango, okay? And with these strokes, I'm just kinda of going back and forth in the same direction. And my darkest areas of the mango are gonna be about here. Now you might be thinking, Hey, Patrick, how come the darkest area of the mango is not way at the very edge? And that's because of something called reflective light, okay? Um, good artists understand reflective light. They recognize it when they see it, and they know how to put it into their artwork, okay? So I am going to make this part of the mango a little bit lighter than the background, but not as dark as this shadow. Okay, now a lot of times when we're shading, our backgrounds determine what the foreground object looks like. And therefore, making the background of this um, picture even darker where the leaves are, it's gonna make the mango stand out even more. Okay. So remember, light's coming from this way. Even on the stem, it's gonna be shaded 
And with the mango, I'm gonna continue to darken the area around the edge, not quite to the very edge of it, but almost to the edge of it. Okay, now I'll go and shade the mango a little bit. In fact, nothing's gonna be real white on this picture. Notice that I'm giving a little bit of shading over the whole mango. Continuing to shade everything on the left half of the mango. Okay, so I'd like to gradually fade and get darker right behind the mango. And remember, this the reflective light is not usually as bright as this direct light where the sun's hitting directly right there. The reflected light still has a little bit of shading to it, okay? There you go. And now if you want to go get some spots in the mango, you know, a lot of them have spots. You can put spots all over the place. And now if you like, you can go get some colors or watercolors or colored pencils and add some color to this drawing because you know those uh, mangoes got a lot of beautiful color, yeah? I usually start with my light colors first and then work around it. And, and mangoes can be all kinds of colors. So I'm going to kind of make it a little yellow in the lighter areas here. Notice that I'm kind of leaving a little white spot in the middle, yeah? And I'll just put the colors where I think they look the nicest. I'll add some red. You know the red, when it mixes with the green, it kind of turns purple or brown, you know? A little bit of purple. Okay, and another thing that's really going to make this colorful mango stand out is by getting the background nice and dark against it. I'm going with the dark green. Okay, and if you want, you can give it a little blue sky. And there you have a quick little colored pencil drawing of a mango. <laughs> when we return, I'll show you how to paint a mango. Aloha and thank you for joining me for the painting mangoes episode. Oh my goodness, it's getting fun now. Look at this picture of a mango I took in my yard. Yeah, well, I mean, it was in somebody else's tree and then it ended up in my yard. But um, look at the beautiful arrangement of colors we got on a mango. Everything. Uh, yellow, green, red. The red mixes with the green. It gets kind of brownish, purple. And then there's a beautiful reflective haze on top of it. I did a quick sketch of a mango. You can make yours different if you want. The first thing I'm going to do is cover this whole painting with the colors that I think I'm going to use. So there's the first layer. Now I'll paint a base coat for my mango. And I tell you what, a nice thing to do is to give yourself a preview of your plan. Um, go ahead and put the colors where you think they go. Because this preview can tell you if you want to make adjustments in the next layer. You could start by painting the whole mango yellow if you want. But uh, I ain't gonna. Okay. Putting green where I think I might put greens. Get a pink, you know. Maybe a little orange in there. Oh yeah, salmon color. So I finish covering my canvas with a layer of paint. And when I do, I feel a sense of psychological reward. Okay, and here's like a practice run of my mango. I want to get all in here. Okay, so now my painting is covered with one layer of paint. Okay, now we're ready to start our second layer. I'm going to get a nice light sky color and I'll put that in first. OK, 
Okay, so my goal now is to cover this whole canvas with a second layer of paint. Okay, so my upper sky is going to get darker and purpler than my lower sky. Okay, get a little bit of the upper sky color. I'm going to put a little bit right here. I'm going to have a stem coming down, but I think I also want to have a little bit of sky showing to kind of throw in a little sky color right here. It's enough for my sky. Now I can put my other colors. Uh, I'll start with some lighter green down here. I've got some white, yellow, green. I like to have a lot of blur in some of the painting, you know, like a unfocused camera. Because basically whatever you make in sharp focus is what people are going to look at first. So I show you how to build your paintings uh, with layers of nature, what to put down first and next and next. It's a thing that makes sense. It's great if you're just starting to really learn about nature and how to rebuild it with paint. So those are some nice colors for uh, leaves. I'm trying to go for a medium green there and do -do -do -do. Do -do 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 -do. Okay, well I like that look right there. All right, now it's time for the fun part. You ready? Oh yeah. We're gonna paint this mango again with some nice, rich, thick paint. Oh, it's gonna look so juicy. I'm starting to get hungry for mangoes. Settle down, everybody, just settle down. So I will make this side of the stem a little darker. Okay. Now you're starting to tell the viewer where the light's coming from. Up here, yeah, okay. We'll start putting some light on that side. Oh. Ding. Ah. I'm going to take this and paint it anywhere. I even think I might want some yellow, okay? Remember, I can put more of this than I'm going to need because the other colors, they're going to kind of overpower my yellow, okay? Okay, I'm going to put some nice rich green in there where I think I might even use green. Bounce it around. Okay, poke it around, yeah. Okay, now the green can go farther than you're going to have it too because I tell you what, it can mix with other colors. But I am going to start off with a little bit of, you know, red and white and yellow. Okay, chicken head red I got right there. Some white, get a pink color. I'll start it right there. Okay, my goal again is to cover this whole mango with a second layer of paint. In fact, I think I'm going to enjoy putting a little bit of a orange and white down there. Starting to get all the colors of our rainbow in here. In fact, I think it's going to be nice to put a little bit of orange right there along the edge, contrasting with our blue. Yeah. <laughs> I'm thinking that a little orange, almost right around the edge might be a nice little touch. So, the reason I think that, I think it'll help to give a little roundness effect to the mango. Yeah, it worked. It looks a little bit more round than just flat. Ah. Okay, bopping around, dots, dots, dot, 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 dot. Oh yeah, that looks nice. I mean, when the red and the green opposite complementary colors are going to mix together, they're going to make kind of a brownie or purpley color in this case. Boom, right there. Yeah. 
I'm happy. You happy? Okay. I'm going to get a little darker purple, add a little blue to it in a little part of this mango right here. Give it some form up there. Yeah, some places we're going to get it dark. And I tell you what, we're not going to leave it dark. We're going to put reflections on top of those dark places. Okay, I'm poking around, tiny dots. Using the corner of the brush, creating tiny little dots here. Okay, I tell you what, I'm going to take the corner of this brush and just bop around tiny little dots of yellow. Alrighty, so now I'm going to finish off this painting by doing a little bit of glazing. I'll play with the leaves a little bit. Um, try some, uh, try some of this blue highlights too. They look nice in certain places. Okay, light blues, light blue reflections work nice a lot of times on leaves. Basically, they're reflecting the color of the sky. All right, so on this mango, I'm going to choose some places that I'd like to have a nice reflection. I'm going to start with uh, reflections of blue between these two sky colors. I'm going to give a little bit of it on the edge of this mango. And look at the effect it has, just a little bit of this haze. So go easy on this. Uh, you know, there's parts of the mango that can get more of it. And you can bounce it around, bounce it around. So this is a light blue I'm using, sky blue, crossing over some colors, giving it some shine. See how I bounce it around? It tends to show a little more of the colors underneath. Um, I can pet a little bit of it almost all over the place. Trying to go a little whiter in some places. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and make it whiter right here. Yeah. Okay, it's scary, I know. But when it works, oh my goodness. Well, you get the picture. It can get quite wild. Mangoes have many colors. But now you know them a little better, and I hope you have a great time painting them. Thank you for joining me on Painting in Paradise. I hope you enjoyed learning about mangoes and how to draw and paint them. I'd love to see what you did, so why don't you send a picture of you and your art to aloha at patrickching.com. <laughs> Bye-bye. Say